Good morning, viewers. I love you all in Christ Jesus' mighty name. Have a blessed day as you are listening to the Word of God. We all know the situation which we are going through. It is a difficult situation whereby people are asking themselves many questions. But I want you to go with me to the book of Mark, chapter 4, verse 35. On the same day, when evening had come, he said to them, Let us cross over to the other side. Now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was, and other little boats were also with him. And a great windy storm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that it was already filling, but he was in the stem, asleep on a pillow. Listen. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. But he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Praise the Lord. Brethren, our topic today should be faith. It isn't true that Christ Jesus was not in the boat. But one thing they lacked, the disciples, is faith. The sea and the wind wasn't the issue. But it was time to test how powerful is faith. It is now a time for us to test and see how powerful faith is. Instead of complaining, talking this and that, let us now consider who is in the boat. This time who is in the boat is Christ Jesus. I assure you, the Lord Jesus is in the boat. And when they were crying, everybody is fearing, they looked this way and the other way. They said, eh, but somebody is in the boat. We have seen him performing miracle. Why can't we wake him up? Why can't we call him? This time is for us all to call him that we may see the power of God, the working of God, and how to trust him and how to recognize him in our day-to-day -day life. So, don't take the situation as a curse. Take it as a time to consider how great is he who is in the boat. And listen to this. Sometimes, When the rain comes, you are too happy. But you don't even remember that one day, drought will come. But both the rain and the drought are good for the plant. And they are good for we, the gardeners. But hear what the Lord said. In 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. 
If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin and heal their land. It is a time given to us, an ample time for prayers. We all know and we should know we have one giver. Even before we ask him, because the body you have, the hands, the legs, you never ask him that God give me hands, legs, or whatever. But he gave it to you. The eyes he gave it to you. The teeth, the stomach gave it to you for free. Now he wants you to recognize and realize, hey, oh, whatever I have, who gave it to me? Where are you? It is our time to look for him with a humble heart, a heart of repentance. He said, if my people called by my name will humble themselves, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. Then I'll hear from heaven and I'll forgive their sin and heal their land. It is time given to you and to me. Maybe you have been working, I've been working, and no time to seek his face. Now it is like a drought time. It is time to prayer the seeds because it is about rain. So this time use it humbly to pray, seek the face of the Lord, the giver. And I know when the time comes after all this, the lockdown, It is a time that you have prayed too much. You have asked a lot from God and he has given you a lot. So whatever be your business, eh? this time it will be more powerful than before. Because before you couldn't get time to pray as you are now concentrating on prayer, considering now the situation that no one is like him, no one to run to, only God. I know whatever you are gathering now from him, remember he said, John 14, 13 and 14, and whatever you ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I'll do it. Why don't you use this prayer to ask whatever you didn't have? It is true is a giver. You cannot doubt. He gave you the hands, the legs, whatever you are using. You cannot say, God cannot give it to me. So let's use this humble time in a proper way, not complaining, and ask what we shall use when it rains. The seeds we are going to plant. I know your business will be greater than before. I know you are running now from sickness to good life, from bad to good, because you are in prayer. Ask him, whatever be, those who didn't have jobs, those who didn't have this or that, we are all on our knees in prayer more than before. Ask him. And remember, I told you about this situation, the prophecy in December. I told you that this economy, you see, will twist itself month of uh, March, April, and May. Then you know now visibly when it will rain. Don't ask me such a question. When will it rain? 
gather, 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 gather everything from God, it is about to rain. So instead of complaining, use this time to ask from God or whatever you do not have. Such a time may happen. Sometimes for the glory of God. But what is the work of the church? I'll read in Acts of Apostles, chapter 12. Listen to this. And don't worry. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched out his hand to harass some from the church. Then he killed James, the brother of John, with a sword. And because he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to seize Peter also. Now it was during the days of the unleavened bread. So when he had arrested him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four squads of soldiers to keep him, intending to bring him before the people after Passover. Peter was therefore kept in prison. But listen, listen, what the church is doing. Some were asking themselves question is, we don't see our pastor. Where did he go? No, this is the work of the church. This is the work of the pastor. Listen, verse 5 again. Peter was therefore kept in prison, but constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. Don't worry, the church is standing with you to offer you constant prayer, constant prayer every day, every night, and something is about to happen to the situation, to your family. And when Herod was about to bring him out, that night, Peter was sleeping, bound with the two chains between two soldiers, and the guards before the door were keeping the prison. Now behold, an angel of the Lord stood by him, and a light shone in the prison, and he struck Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise quickly, and his chains fell off his hands. Then the angel said to him, Get yourself and tie on your sandals. And so he did. And he said to him, Put on your garment and follow me. So he went out and followed him and did not know that what was done by the angel was real, but thought he was seeing a vision. When they were past the first and the second guard posts, they came to the iron gate that leads to the city, which opened to them of its own accord. And they went out and went down one street, and immediately the angel departed. And when Peter had come to himself, he said, Now I know for certain that the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered me from the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the Jewish people. Brethren, don't say the pastor hasn't been there. I've been there offering constant prayer for you. Viewers, I'm still offering you constant prayer. Those who are sick, I pray day and night, constant prayer. Be healed. Those who have a chance to touch the screen of our television, Gabriel TV, Glorious Times, those who are watching us on the Facebook, YouTube, and other Please get your hand, put it on the screen, pray with us, whatever the problem, whatever the issue, God knows he will solve it. And I know the time we shall meet, it will be time to give testimonies. And remember 1 Corinthians, 
10.13 No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. I know the Lord Jesus, with our prayers, he has already made a way for you. You escape this condition and you come out victorious. And remember what happened when you were in your mother's womb. The Lord kept you for the nine months. You were eating, drinking, breathing. So don't complain. The same God who did so will do so within this period. I love you all. May the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Those who are sick, pray with me. Father, they are your children. Heal them, O Lord. Those who have no food, feed them, O Lord Jesus. Those who are troubled by demons, be delivered in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, they are children. Deliver them. Set them free. Give them a mind to consider you, that you are the giver. Since you gave them before, when they have not asked you what you gave to them, this now time given to us, I know, O oh Lord, give them more, whatever they are asking for. Give them a way out. Save them from this situation. Make them stronger. Be strong in the Lord Jesus. 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 The Lord Jesus. I know the power of the Holy Ghost will strengthen you. Father, keep them alive. Separate them from whatever has been disturbing them. Until when we meet, I wish you well in Jesus' holy name. I pray. Thank you for watching this video. For more videos and updates, subscribe to our YouTube channel and you will receive notifications of our latest videos. Press your subscribe button and notification button today. Thank you.